since we're now at the other end of our honeymoon with the YouTube algorithm gods, I'm going to ambush you with my shameless book plug right at the start, more for variety's sake than anything else. There can't be many of you who haven't bought a copy yet, so this is really just for the stragglers. Also, to ask that if you can, to support my channel and future videos a little and often. Link is in the description. Things break. Not all at the same time, and yes, this episode's title is melodramatic, but I've collected up some repairs and replacements I've had to do over the past few months. Let's start with the most expensive. Despite appearing to be absolutely fine a few months ago and starting Allen's three-cylinder turbo diesel engine with gusto and minimum fuss, the starter motor decided to play dead. During the bolt loosening extravaganza, Allen injured me. Actually, it was because I tried to lever the stuck motor from the mount with a spanner instead of tying cord around the end and giving it a yank, which worked in the end. I'm guessing it wasn't the original, as it was supplied by the UK engine dealer, and Alan wasn't built or outfitted in the UK. Anyway, there wasn't even a whine or a click sound when I pressed the start button, so after a chat to an expert, I decided to swap it out for the spare I'd already bought and that was in the spares box, and then I guess I'd see if the old one could be fixed. Sitting them side by side, I was slightly alarmed by the different positions of the sticky outy bit, which is the solenoid housing, but double check the spec was correct, and just a different manufacturer. Book original parts are even less reasonably priced than peripherals for Apple computers, so most people go for third party ones. Whilst the motor was off, I took the chance to clean up the mount area and parts of the engine block that were behind the motor, and touched up a few areas with my trusty red paint. I then bolted the starter motor back to the engine, using nuts and bolts. I think it looks very smart, but for 200 quid for a motor, it really should. The observant amongst you will notice this custom control panel I'm halfway through making. It means the basic engine controls can be moved around and don't clog up the limited console space in front of the helmsman. It's the original thousand pound wiring loom, yes, a thousand pounds, transplanted onto an electrical junction box, which cost me about a fiver. Next, not so much a broken boat as avoiding a broken head. Whilst I'm not quite ready yet to do the, the wholesale protection of different parts of the boat to stop people breaking their heads or their ribs and all sorts of things if we get into heavy seas, there are some areas of the boat, particularly these sections here where you go from the, the stern to the, uh, to the main living section of Alan, uh, where I do keep on bumping my head. So to avoid breaking my skull any more than I already have, I'm going to install these now. These pre-made pads are just a self-adhesive closed cell foam, shaped and scored so that they fit round at a right angle, and were actually for attaching to concrete posts in car parks. As with everything, from a boat shop these would be £100. These were four for a tenner. Now we'll head down to the stern gland, where the prop shaft exits Allen's interior. One thing that I thought originally I might be able to salvage from the original installation is the oil uh, supply system which runs down to the stone gland and, and lubricates that when it's running. So this is the original reservoir, which just takes normal engine oil. And then there's a, a hose which runs with a couple of Jubilee clips down to the stone gland itself. Now, I thought that might be okay to keep on, but it turns out the hose is um, a real mess. It's gone all floppy. It's um, uh, where the Jubilee clips have, um, have been attached. It started to add to the perishing of the rubber and uh, so yesterday I actually noticed a few drips of oil after I slightly edited the length of this slide and it basically says to me that it's it's knackered so I'm gonna change that over so we have a fresh bit of uh, bit of hose on here all right so the first thing to do is to remove the old hose and these old Jubilee clips which are pretty knackered and there's probably going to be a whole load of oil that's going to end up everywhere. Yeah, that's not ideal. Stick that over there. Just clear up the worst of it. Let's see if there's any. There was any sealant on it. I don't think there was. That's just an old bit, that's a gungy bit of old oil. No, I think it was just a compression fit, which is fine. It's actually simpler. Um, try and wick up a tiny bit of that oil. Cool, okay, right, so I now need to clean up this end as well. This is just a plastic reservoir where the oil lives. 
that, that seems like it's in perfectly good nick it's just a bit dirty give that a clean um right so this here is the mount and that's going to be connected to the inside of the uh of the cowling once it's up, up and running but at the moment this is just sitting free um but essentially it mounts make sure nothing drips out the bottom of here that's right um so that mounts there um so i just need to have a without it, without too much tightness the correct amount of hose to connect the two together nice spread of brand new oil and diesel rated hose perfect and it needs to run from there to this is what i this is what i made a mark um and where is my very sharp knife just uh, finished raining outside and now the sun's out so that's probably gonna mess up my settings on the camera but what well, I guess we'll survive where is my very sharp knife there it is okay let's use the cutting block I have just realized that this is not The correct diameter. <laughs> Luckily, this was only an offcut, and I have exactly the correct gauge at the other end of the boat. So I'm going to go and cut a piece which is the same length as this of the correct size hose. Should I check that? Never mind. Seems a little, little bit odd to me that they would uh, use two very similar but not the same gauge hoses, but uh, maybe they were installed by different people in the in, in the process. Right, so that spare piece can go over there. Right, so this hose sh uh, is a couple of millimetres larger in diameter, so this should now run on quite nicely. Yep, there we are. I haven't decided whether I'm going to, because this is not a fuel line, this is only a an oil lubricant line, about whether I'm going to use O-clips or whether I'm happy with Jubilees. Originally it just had one Jubilee at each end, so they clearly weren't too concerned. Um, so there we go, this is fine for now. Um, I might change these over for O-clips uh, at a later date, but um, I'm very happy with that at the moment. So it's slightly stiffer hose than it was before, which is actually no bad thing because it helps just keep everything in place. Uh, the old hose was seriously floppy and I suspect that's partially due to the rubber starting to perish. Um, and it was probably a slightly softer grade in the first place anyhow. Um, but no, I think that's a, a, a definite improvement, which means no more leaks. Alan's very over-engineered table that you saw me build in episode 6. I'm coating or painting most internal spaces white, as this shows up leaks and reflects light around so I can see everything more clearly. It's also neutral, of course, which when filming means the colour balance in the camera's brain doesn't have a tantrum and make everything red or purple or something. You might ask what broke. Well, the polyurethane coating did. It's tough and hard, but promised to be non-yellowing. This is after just a few weeks, so I'm overcoating with my trusty tough general purpose one pack white paint. I'm going to finish up with another precaution to avoid breaking any human beings on board Allen. The fuel hose trunking is a trip hazard, and so I've fitted two quadrants. These are just wood, soaked with a preservative and primer. Then I use a grab adhesive to fix them in place, and cope with a mix of single pack black paint and a pinch of anti-slip granules. Right, well that's it for this time. More later. Feel free to ask questions and hurl abuse in the comment section. Bye.